The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the uh, Wednesday, the 8th of November edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. And we're looking at, I'm just showing crude oil here. Look at this. Uh, it's done more than a one to one to the downside, gone under the 200 period exponential moving average PD in the weekly chart. Um, this is telling me that. Uh, in terms of the geopolitical side, crude oil is not a factor at this particular time. And that just takes me to a question I had when I look at the XLE. And the XLE um, is down 49 cents at 83.33. This is the S&P Select Energy Spider Fund. If you look at the monthly chart, it's still holding pretty well above the 14-period uh, exponential moving average, which is below the 9-period uh, moving average, which is still very strong. But not the weekly. Today, for the first time, you're looking at the um, S. That means the 9-period moving average in the XLE has slipped negative. That's the first time it's done that since it crossed positive back on the uh, week of the 28th of July when it went above 84. So yeah, we are back at 84. We're actually at 83.39. We'll see what happens. So just a couple of quick things here. I, I mentioned this in the um, in the up in the 10 o'clock Tiger Financial News Network update. You see this chart here. Uh, this was the um, one minute chart. Gave a nice signal with the uh, two Doji candles at this peak at 9:51. Was it 9:54? 9:54 this morning at 44.07.75 made a little double top as it got to the double top the technicals were starting to weak so um grabbing uh, grabbing a, a short position at 4406 or was it 4405 that's one thing because i really wanted this to be a two-click session i've been working very hard at trying to decipher the credentials the the kind of acuity the kind of parameters that you would look at for a potential Two-click session, either early in the morning when you can go to a buy signal and just wait and wait and wait and maybe later in the day or maybe sometimes even after the close, you get out of that position. You've just had the one position. You've done nothing all day. You've got the one position long side on the on whatever position it is you're taking. In this case, I use it. I have to use the E-mini, S&P, um, and then you get out. Now, I thought to myself, this is a perfect two-click session because the top that was made – the move that we had yesterday and today was like, I don't believe it. We've had such a spectacular move. We're not even having a bit of a pull, but we haven't even made a peak A in the Dow or the QQQ. We have made a peak A in the uh, S&P. Now it's gone to a leg B. Surely, especially with Powell speaking today, well, I, don't, I don't think he's doing anything much. Um, wouldn't this be just perfect for a two-click session? However... As it got to the 200 period moving average, um, right here in the one minute chart, and I'm just getting uh, busy with my, my sh getting prepared for my show, etc. I I just said to myself, you know what, out, let's just get out. It, yeah, it could be a two click session. My mind is just not set to be able to follow that, and I didn't look at all the all the different parameters. Uh, a lot of it was met. But the fact that the green nine period moving average this is almost like the dollar weekly chart. The fact that the green nine period exponential moving average was still so strong. And even with that slide, I couldn't see it turning pink. I said, to myself, just for safety's sake, just get out of it. That's not that's one of the parameters that you need is that very quickly, the one minute goes to the five minute, just like now I'm going to go to the dollar, just like you want to see the X, Y. You want to see the dot. Oh. Don't go that in a one-minute chart. I'm looking at it. There we go. Okay. The dollar up today, but it did go below the channel that I drew, and it went below the channel wave inside track propellant zone. It went below it. It should be a repellent zone. Well, the fact is we're above it. That's not the issue. The issue is right, right here. The weekly chart, you see this green 
Let me just see. I don't really want to go to a chart because I've already messed up my, some of the other charts that I was using. Uh, so I think you can see it. Okay, I'm looking at Tiger YouTube. You see this green, maybe just for now, I'm going to make it a little thicker. So let me do that. I can change without any problems. I'll make it quite thick just for the moment. I'll, I'll take it back again later. Yeah, you see that green? See the way that green line period moving average is above the four. I've had webinars on this. If you go to, if you're a subscriber, you know that I've got these webinars, and uh, you can check them out. I discussed this. I, I, I've had one in great detail with this. I intend to I do something because I had a number of questions. I, I'm hoping to do an all day one um, at some point in the next number of weeks, uh, where I'm going to just demonstrate some of these techniques live. Um, and what we would look at is, look, in the daily chart of the dollar, the pink nine period moving average is still quite strong. The MACD is very weak stochastic, it's way down at 23%, but price is the arbiter of a trend, and the price is holding very nicely in the daily. But it's making lower lows and lower highs, no question about it. And you've done a more than a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. However, to get this green nine period moving average to really tank, in the weekly chart, you'd have to see 103.65 or a really sudden move that is just day after day where it goes down to the 104.10 area because that's what it would take to get that green to go pink. And then you've got a sell signal upgrade to a sell mode in the weekly chart for the very first time in a long time since the July rally. So I just wanted to show you how these things work. And that's not to say that the deterioration in the E-mini couldn't start and continue. Uh, after all, if you're in over here, you could just put your stop at a break even and just let it ride. That wasn't the issue. I didn't want to be distracted from the show today. So with that said, let me just go to the questions that I have here. Yeah, so I want to just go through this again. <clears throat> uh, within the context of, get out of that of the indices. Let me do this. Here's the Dow, INDU. The Dow is extend, had a spectacular move from 32.327 to today's eye of 34,250. It's almost 2,000 points. That is absolutely fantastic. In a single leg A, I would have to venture, certainly in the weekly chart, I can see it right here. It's the first time in a long, long time. <clears throat> that you've had, you did have from 28.66 in the weekly chart, you did have a beautiful straight up move, but this is this is one session. And I went to the Chapman Wave uh, Falling X um, repellent line, and it's just a tad above it right now. So within that context, uh, this is a, is a fantastic move. The 200 period moving average is a 33.802. And the other moving averages are below that. But most importantly, it's that 200 period moving average that was a repellent. Now it's going to be appropriate. It's going to be, it's a magnet line. At some point, I suspect we will be testing it. How soon? Just hard to say. All right. Um, that's the Dow. Single leg A up. S&P, this is leg B to the upside. Uh, there it is, leg B. And the high today is 43.91 from 41.03 to 43.91. Absolutely fantastic move, uh, 390 points. This is 300, 290 points. Uh, right on the Chapman Wave, falling X inside track, repellent zone um, in the weekly chart. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 58, S&P's up 4.50, holding quite well. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. I just wanted to show you something here. We're back and look at the power of this 200 period exponential moving average. Here we are. Look how it's hugging that line. It just keeps coming back to us like a sine wave. It goes under it and then over it and then under it. And now it's just going over but at a certain point, the longer it hangs out there, the greater the chances are at some point it becomes a repellent zone. So that line is hugging, but we'll see because the further away you start to go, if it's 43.96, if you start to trade under 43.98 um, right now, if you start to trade under 43.96 with a dreaded H pattern, that's it, good. Now you can have your second leg to the downside, and we'll see what happens there. Okay, as I say, I'm a little upset that I didn't have the patience just to hold that position and just say, you know, so what? It's just a day. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, there's a lot going on. So let me show you what, what I'm looking at here. In the Dow, uh, sorry, I was in, at gold. We haven't done silver. So gold has pulled back. And remember, we discussed this over and over and over ever since the Mideast uh, conflagration, uh, and I said, it's a geopolitical thing. I don't see the GDX, the gold miners, moving up like they should. Something's wrong with this picture in the sense that you would expect that if gold is trading so much higher, from if gold can go from, uh, what is it, a GC, from the just the mid-1800s or the low 1800s, 1820, if we can go from the 1820s, to 2000, over 2010, and yet the gold miners are not purchased. So I love when the gold miners move first and then gold comes along to confirm it. Remember what I was talking about in the um, update at 10 o'clock? I said, based on this Chapman Wave Roman candle, this is a particular candle that I discuss. I've had webinars on that as well. If you sign up for my um, newsletter, you get not just a newsletter, but you get uh, just a plethora of um, webinars on each one of these techniques. And what I'd say is, mm -mm, 
Gold and light period moving average is still uh, above the 14. That's a good sign. But if, if it starts to trade for another 30 minutes below uh, 1960, I think it's 69, uh, there's a real good chance we'll go to the low of, the, of this candle of yesterday on the continuous contract, but possibly even hit the 200 period moving average of 1961. So we're at 1963 right now. So that says to me, uh, my my contention that this was a geopolitical aspect and money, international money, countries flow to gold when they are um, nervous about everything. Or if the financials, the XLF, was really tanking, if it was instead of being at 33.61 on the 200 period moving average, if it plunged to the 29th, I think then you would see gold moving. So this is to me um, more an aberration than anything else. Uh, it's not to say gold, if gold actually holds very well and gets back to the high 1900s, I think that the gold stocks will follow, kind of reluctantly, but they will follow. Meantime, 22.71 of 12 cents in the silver, uh, making low lows and low highs, but not really fading. It's just not acting great. I want to just quickly do high grade copper. High grade copper went to peak A, peak B, peak C, and now it's pulling back a little bit. I just want to quickly check to see did the E mini break that level? Uh, I think it's going to, oh, wrong one, uh, e -mini. oh, yeah, it's at 43.95. This is going to be very important. Where is it now? Um, yes, there it is. So there's your dreaded H. That's the pattern we always talk about, the dreaded H, uh, where it takes out the left side low. Then you've got two or maybe three bars in which to close above the left side low. In this case, 43.95.25. And if it can do that, it says, hey, maybe it just rallies a little bit back to one of the moving averages. It's going to be hard to get back to the 200 period moving average. But so far, now you've got the kick in of the five minute 200 period exponential moving average. Isn't that fascinating? Look at this. It was fantastic support, support, and then woo, breaks out to the upside, goes all the way to the 40, uh, 4407 um, area, and now it's trading at 4390. For right on the 200 period exponential moving out. I, uh, to me, I'd said at the 10 o'clock news, maybe this is going to be the top for the day. We don't know. I am anticipating some digestive phase, but it's not going to be easy because buyers just keep wanting to come in to push the market higher, push the market higher. So with that said, I want to get out of this and just say that the um, going on with those, look at the euro. Well, first of all, let's go back to the dollar. Has a pullback now. Uh, yes, it's pulled back a little bit. It's up only 11 ticks at 105.62. That, as I say, the weekly chart is the one I'm focusing on. Look at the euro. It's gone very quickly to a peak D. It's still right at the 200 period moving average, but it has hit it twice. Now that's going to be a magnet. The 1.073 level is going to be the magnet. How does it break above, or does it keep getting repelled there? Leg B in the weekly chart. But the daily chart for the first time has had a peak A, peak B, peak C, and a peak D. Wow, we haven't seen that in the euro since that big peak D that was made in the Chapman Wave methodology. Remember, the fourth highest peak is peak D. Uh, that's where other things can happen on the 18th of July at 1.1275. It cascaded down to the 1.04 um, area. I don't like to type the numbers in here because... Um, it gets smoothed out and then all the notation changes. It's not automated. I do it. Every single chart you ever see with notation is hand, hand charted. Many of them I've had to do 10, 15, 20, 30 times over again because if my instead of saving everything as I'm doing it, I wish there was a way to do that. Um, it's only if a close shuts down, I, I lose data and then it comes back but in a different file in a different place. I can never find it. So it's not lost. It's just somewhere. So in the meantime, let's go to the USDJPY. Spending a little too much time on this because I wanted to actually get to some other things, some of the stocks. Look, we made a peak D in the Chapman Wing methodology. That's where other things can happen, DOE. And we've gone to a leg E, still a leg E, got away for Friday's close. In the weekly chart, it accomplished everything that we were talking about in this particular pattern. <clears throat> There's a rally that makes high highs and higher lows. And if it continues that way, it can go to just under, right on, or just above the previous high, usually at a peak D, 
and then you've got to be careful. This is in the leg E, and the previous high in the continuous contract was 151.94, the week of the 21st of October of 2022. This is a year later, and we've already been down to the 126 level. Walking the nine period moving average, isn't that beautiful? What a lovely technique that is. Um, now, I want to go back to this just to show you something very interesting. So those are the currencies. If you look at the USD CAD, this is the CAD. This is the US dollar, Canadian dollar. It's just breaking the resistance on this long-term trend line, downtrend line, second month that has gone above it. The It's gone to a leg D in the weekly chart, gone to a peak E. It almost looks like the um, yen. Remember the yen we were looking at just now? Um, isn't this fascinating? And if you look at the British pound, uh, and I'm just going to the continuous contract of the British pound. British pound made a peak D over the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart. Our monthly chart is arching over. It's under. It's still pink in the nine period moving average. And you've got a peak A, peak B, and a peak C right at the 200 period moving average. Wow, when you put the techniques that you see here at TFNM with all the different hosts, you put them together. And, and, uh, I took a great workshop last night. So, you know, there are a lot of things going on. Dow's down 40, up 46. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I was just had a question. Yeah, Basil, please take a look at HRP. I added December puts on the close yesterday, trying to recapture principal and roll them down. Then you see sub 36 coming. 
so let me just do this. Uh, what I was saying is uh, I, sometimes I, I lose my notations. I've been, done HR block, HR block for, I don't know, for decades. So I don't have the chart. It took me just the, two minutes the, during the break. I did the monthly chart going back to 2020. I did the, uh, the weekly chart. I did the daily chart. So it made a peak E. And look at the number of peak Ds it made. It made, whoa, look at this. From the low that was made under 28 back in um, probably May of 20, whatever that was, 2020, 20, oh, 2022, it's gone. Peak A, B, C, D, E, pulls back. Peak A, hits the 200 period moving average, stalls, breaks out, goes to D, holds above the 200 period moving average, goes to A, B, C, D again. That's the third one. Uh, and then another one, peak A, B, C, D. But the nine period moving average, this is what I'm talking about, did not cross negative. So this became an E right here, just under 45. And now it's trading. It hit a low this morning. Oh, congratulations there. 30, 39.20 was the low today. It's trading at 40.31. Um, so the question is, can it go to 36? So this is HR block finance, uh, taxes. Woo hoo hoo. All I can say is. Um, I'm watching the weekly chart. The nine is still way above the 14. The monthly chart is making an H pattern. Uh, it's still looking pretty good. So this daily chart has the look that it can go one to one to the downside, which says 38.50 to 37.75 would be my immediate visual. But okay, so the question is, when can it do it? And if it's going to do it, where, where and when? So my answer is, this is, the day is young. We're an hour into the session. So this candle would normally be a perfect Chapman Wave Roman candle. So it's trading at 40.31. If it closes uh, above, let me give you the exact half, above 40. If it closes above 40.32, it's trading at 40.29 right now. Um, then it'll be a Chapman Wave Roman candle. And if that's the case, if in the next two days, no, I'm not going to say two days, it's really one day. In the next the next session, if at any point during the day it's holding below 40, below 40, no, below 39.75. Of course, today it could close at 30, 38. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying, as it stands right now, if this was the close, this is what I would do. I would say at any point on Wednesday, on Thursday, if it's closing, if it's holding below 39.70 for 60 to 90 minutes, it's just a really good chance that today's low of 39.20 will be tested. If instead by the end of the day it starts to close at the 40.60 or higher level, the same principle applies, but I have to raise the level of wherever the halfway is of this wick from the, the body of the candle low, that is the body of the candle, to the wick low, if that's the way it is, then use the same measurement. If it closes, if it's like 60 to 90 minutes below that halfway marker, there's a good chance it's going to very quickly go down to the bottom. But if it starts to, so today's young, 40.39, uh, Dow's down, uh, up 25, S&P's unchanged. Um, and as I said, I believe that everything I was looking at suggested that we should be seeing some kind of a pullback today. That kind of pullback uh, has already, in most cases, made new intraday highs. So we've extended many of the charts in leg A or B. So it's just saying to you that buying is, is to change the buying to determine selling, you'd have to see the Dow down 180 points, the S&P probably down about 32 points, and a rally that looks like, oh, yeah, we've got to buy every... And then that ready fails, and by the end of the day, we close at the lows. And you need to have bad news. We haven't had the bad news. Remember, markets go up. As long as there's no real bad news that's the focus, markets tend to go up. As soon as there's bad news, you get the dark news cloud cover, and the markets get impacted negatively. As long as there isn't that, you can have something in background. Background means nothing. It has to be foreground. So as it stands right now, the bias of the market is to be buying but on a short-term basis, just on a, on a purely speculative overbought condition, and my relatives, my, my sorry, my on-balance volume was suggesting that was the case, we can see some kind of a pullback. Okay, so I hope that helps you. So the question is, if you've got puts, 
uh, it's all very well talking about all the stuff on the next one or two days. The question already is, open the chart up. You always have to open the chart up and see what the big picture is. The big picture is from this marker right here, you start to see negative action in the technicals. And it's confirmed by the high that was made with the divergence between the, the rally and the failure of the technicals. But you have to wait for the nine period moving average. That's confirmed as negative. So I would say to you that if this low is taken out, today's low, anytime in the next, going into Tuesday of next week, then the 200 period, close to the 200 period moving average, which would say 38.10 to maybe 37.75, the closer we get, the greater this becomes just a magnet. It'll grab it and drag it to the 37.61 level. So 36, I don't know, about 36, I'm going one step at a time. The low of the 6th of September was 38.70. That has to be broken on the closing basis. Hope that helps you. Oh, and the upside, I always like to look at the other picture, is if there is a close, two closes above today's high of 41.36, that's a really good sign. It says that the um, 14 and 7 period exponential moving averages are going to narrow and they'll become magnets. I always have to look at both sides. All right, we're, we're back to uh, looking at the other questions that came in. Where, where, where was it? Um, XPEV, XPEV put, uh, XPEV is the uh, Schmeng, I don't know how to pronounce it, XPENG, Inc. Designs, the Chinese company designs, develops, manufactures smart EVs. There's just a hint that some of the EV action is just, uh, there's a little bit of favoritism right now, but uh, it's going to be tough. ABC in the daily chart, it's pulled back, it's down 98 cents at 16.15. The weekly chart had a fabulous move up, but now it's given it back in three days. And the nine period moving average is still positive. So, you know, the put position, normally I just say absolutely yes, but I'm not going to say that right now. I'm going to say the nine is still over the 14. The MACD is still good. Stochastic's over 80% and 85%. I'd be a little careful. That's all. You want to see the general market, our market, U.S. markets close sharply lower today to have this Chinese. Look at the FXI. FXI, that's the China large caps. Uh, it's almost the same pattern, but it's holding really nicely. The weekly chart is not that great, but it's holding quite well. So I'm just going to say down 13 cents in 26.18. My, my eye says that over a period of three, four days, we'll probably go to peak A, peak B. Yeah, we'll probably go over 26.64. It's at 26.18. Um, I, I think the trend on the very short term is up. The weekly trend is struggling. So let's put the two things together. Next question came in as... Oh, great. That's nice. That's nice. Can you uh, look at uh, Bank of America and ARM? Yes, I want to look at both of those. Actually, I, look, I want to look at Bank of America, but ARM fits the picture as well. Bank of America trading down today, uh, 16 cents. I'll be right back. That was up. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. So, Bank of America are trading at 28.04, down 12 cents. Because of this gap, and the fact that the day after the gap, it went under, it closed above it. Next day, it went under and just barely closed right on the on that. And then today, it's a little bit weak, says to me, it's attempting to form a base. Now, the question, I think, from uh, um, the den is, I'm guessing what the question is, is this a time to, if, I don't know if you're in it, but it, would, it, would you go into Bank of America? Because the TLT, I think, has made, I don't know if it's significant, but I think it's A low. I don't think it's the low. It's attempting some kind of, it's in the weekly chart. It's going to take a long time to really break to the upside. I, I like the action. I'm going to say that I would not treat it as a long-term position. But I would definitely be looking at, at as having some of the bank, one of the bank stocks, and Bank of America could be fine. It acted so poorly, but now it's starting to hold very well after that big move up from last week. You could start a position, and I'd much prefer to say start a position 2803, just because I think it will get back to 28, even if there's a sudden dip. I'm going to say make a fairly large uh, stop just initially because the gap up high, this is the gap up of the 2nd of November, which was 2760. Uh, so it's not a big deal. I'd have about a point and a half just to stop. And even then, I'd have a more mental stop than a physical stop. I think it's ready. And what I would do is I'd say slowly it's going to work its way towards 2930. The closer it gets to 2940, the closer it gets to the 200 period moving average of 2967. That'll change, obviously, by then. It's the first time, I mean, since it broke down, Back in February of this year, up in the 35 area, it ran down to the 26 and then ran up to the 32 or 33 area back in uh, late July, early August. That 200 period moving average hasn't even become a magnet, it's not even close. So I would do a tent, I would not think of it as an intermediate term buy yet. But if it starts to hold in the 29s at some point in November, that'll be a really important thing. But uh, the month, weekly and monthly chart need a lot of work. So that's number one. Number two is, let me just write them. I wrote them down. So I'll just quickly touch ARM. I'll do more on that tomorrow. ARM is a little different. This is coming off uh, ARM is uh, ARM holding PLC. So it's in the financial area. It's got that. I, I would not do ARM right now. I just, I'm going to wait. Let's, I'll do a little bit more work tomorrow. Next question is SAP. 
I used to know someone whose wife used to work for them uh, in a very senior position. She now works for Square Overseas. Um, so I always remember SAP only because of that. I don't know nothing much more about them than she worked for them. Yeah, so I used to have this notated. I don't have it notated. The monthly charts improving, the weekly charts making a beautiful return back to the left side high of 145. It said 142. Um, I like this very much. Now, I didn't ask, I didn't see whether or not you you were in it and you were, let me, if, I, if you give me a second, I need to go back to the question. Uh, I think you just said you put it in there as something to look at. Yeah, so, um, uh, all right, I don't want to take too much time here. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'm looking at it absolutely fresh and saying, what would I do? And I'm just saying to you, if you are long, SAP is obviously with these gaps. Well, it's a foreign, uh, I think it's foreign held. It has these gaps. Not the point. The point is it's acting extremely well at 142. Uh, I like it very much. Would I add to it now? No, absolutely not. At 142, I'd wait for under 139-ish area to, to assess for a, just a real quick trade up towards the high of 145. But at this particular point, it's acting well. There's nothing negative about this other than the price visually looks a little extended. But I like it very much and absolutely could pull back a little. It is in a leg F, but this could actually be an alternate count F slash C. My guess is going to that's what it'll turn out to be. And the weekly chart is, is very strong. So, yes, I like it very much. Next question was uh, UNG. So UNG, this is the uh, UNG is the United States National Gas Fund. Uh, in the den for months now, people have called it the widow maker. It's probably the widower maker as well. Why? Because it's just been stuck in a range. And now it's making a little bit lower low than it had for the last couple of weeks. Hasn't taken out the low of back in um, August or September, but it's not acting well at all. And the nine period moving average has flipped, well, flipped to, to negative in the weekly chart, but the week is young. So what my contention has been is I wouldn't get carried away. If you have a position, this goes all the way back to when it was trading at about 6, I think it was 682, if I remember correctly. I said, if you're prepared to hold this as a long term, don't get carried away. And I would not have the, the double or triple. I would. This is the only one I would look at. I think that when it gets to uh, end of October, beginning of November, where the season, the winter season really starts, that's going to be the test because – up until now, the United States National Gas Fund has had an absolute, there's something wrong with the chart in the sense that there must be such a, um, a plethora of, of natural gas viability out there, being able to get it any way you want, any way you want, that it's just not showing any strength. There's, I'm, not seeing, uh, I'm not seeing the kind of uh, scarcity that pushes prices up. Instead, I'm seeing an abundance that pushes prices down. But it should still have a decent rally at some point. So all I'm going to say is I wouldn't get carried away if you've got a position. It's so hard because it has such big falls and it's got this almost like an Eiffel Tower. It's almost like an inverted head and shoulders pattern to the downside. But I do think it's going to hold now. If it was me and I was holding a position um, because it's had a gap, two gaps down, and today's making a lower low than yesterday. If you've got just a small loss or a small gain, I'd, I'd make sure that's all I have. And I would put it, I would, at this point, I'd say now and now I'm waiting to, to look at it as to say rather buy higher highs and higher lows because it's, it should not have taken out this support level, this line that in the horizontal line, the midpoint line of the channel. And it's just done that. The midpoint line is at uh, 6.82 and it's at 6.46. This is the, the week is young. If it can close above that level by Friday, phew, that's a good sign. But if it goes slightly lower, it says there's a good chance it's going to go down to the under six, down to the 587 low of April. So this is, I even drew in the arch formation that I thought was a possibility. It didn't do that for subscribers. I'm just avoiding it because it is just too dangerous, only because it's not the usual uh, function of looking at it in a cyclical way, saying winter's coming, it's going to have been in, in um, it's going to be in demand. This is something completely different. So as as a result, I'm saying I would have stops in, 
I would not be messing around. So if you've been in all this time and you have a lot of patients and you do believe you'll be able to get 6.46 where it is right now, uh, again, I do believe you should see 6.46. You might have to wait. That's one thing. But if you're just doing trading, please be careful because the MACD uh, is very sharply lower. The stochastic's at 27%. It could still go under 10%. It still has to go to the teens under 20%. Um, and, the, and the nine period. So just be real careful with it. I, don't, you don't be stuck in this trade, in other words, because if it starts to break down here, when we're getting into middle of November, well, beginning of November, um, I don't know when, when it's going to really have its big rally. So you and G, be a little careful. You want to see, you want to see back in the uh, 710 area within a week. I'll be back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market you're going to need a crystal ball after all it's impossible to predict the future right like any endeavor in life before you decide it's impossible get some advice from the experts you might find that it's not so impossible after all for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Of course, as I said, that uh, I'll go if I have time, just before we wrap up, I'll try to go back that 44 or 5 uh, short that I should have held uh, for a two click trade. I, I it just, as I said, just uh, there was too much going on. I had to just cover it, but. Uh, you never know. I mean, I think we're over oversold for sure. I think we're going to be pulling back. So anyway, so Rivian's down 71 cents at 16.71. You know, I, I see the Rivian. Um, it's it's a re really nice looking car. Um, but until they start to see the cost of each car only cost them maybe 25,000, 2,500 or less. 
and they're selling more cars and we have to increase the sales by, I'd say, about 15%. At that point, I think Rivian will really start to kick to the upside. At this point, I think it's costing them too much. And then the other one, the Polar, whatever it is, uh, I see them. I, I, I searched the other day. I'm looking for the name. If you don't put the name of the car on you, what are you trying to show off? Nobody even knows who you are. Put the name on the car somewhere. I mean, really. All right. Well, in the meantime, Rivian, I don't like Rivian. I think it's going lower. I just be real careful. Next question I had is um, the TUA. Now, I don't TUA. I don't actually. Oh, let me do this quickly. This is the two year. I really I keep forgetting what the two year is in Trade Station. TUA. TUA. Ah, oh, there it is. So if I'm correct, the TUA is the simplify short term something or other. Um, all right. So just on a chart pattern, it's just stuck. It's a 22.02 uh, until it's trading at about 22.35. I think it's just kind of stuck here. And I'd say 21.80 is the support. I'll do a little bit more work. I'll try to figure out w w what's going on. But this is the two-year. Uh, two-year is ZT. No, I don't use E-Trade. I use... Um, I use Trade Station for this particular one. So that's that. Oh, so let me just say that by the end of the day, let me just go to the Dow. By the end of the day, if the Dow, which is down just a little bit now, it's off the high, it's up eight at 34,162, actually is down after two o'clock. What I say to my subscribers, if there's a rally that fails, and then the rally runs, actually starts, a failure starts to rally and then fail. If the Dow is down 20 or more after uh, 2 p.m.